Matthew Vanderpool heads into cycling's roughest race, Peru Bay, on Sunday as the man to beat. The Dutch world champion is riding on a high after winning the Tour of Flanders in his typical dominant fashion. Belgian star of Team Visma Lisa bike, Walt Van Aert, well, he remains sidelined after his crash one week ago in Dwarves Dwar Vlanderen. He is recovering from a broken collarbone, sternum, and ribs. And no, Tade Pogacar will not be racing Peru Bay. We are in northern France for Peru Bay, the third of cycling's five monuments. The race winds north from Copiana to Roubaix, where it will finish with a lap and a half on the industrial town's cement velodrome. Peru Bay presents 260 kilometers. 161 miles flat out racing on either departmental roads or tiny farm roads and those farm roads well they are cobbled and brutal 29 points or sectors ranked with various levels of difficulty 55.7 kilometers in total this is why they call it the hell of the north in other races it's the climbs that often decide the race in peru bay it's nasty cobbles with gaps between as wide as the cobbles themselves. The worst ones, five star black diamond runs, the Armbrook Forest, Mons en Pavel, and the Carrefour de l'Arbe sectors. Expect crashes, punctures, and attacks. Just ask John Dagenkalp and Walt Van Art about their 2023 troubles prior to the Vanderpool missile strike on Roubaix. And we have late breaking news. Instead of a straight run into the feared Arnberg Forest, just four days out, the organizers added a couple of turns to hopefully slow down the pace. The sector over the abandoned coal mine has put an end to many riders' hopes and dreams, notably in 1998 when Johan Museo crashed and broke his kneecap. Most riders are happy with the decision, but it could cause even more crashes with the turns. Matthew Vanderpool tweeted in response, Is this a joke? The Alpes and de Kunic Dutch star is the outright favorite for Sunday's race. Matthew Vanderpool, his season preparation of cyclocross and targeting pinpointing one-day races appears to have been the magic formula. Helping Jasper Philipsen win Milano San Remo, his season debut race, then going on to win E3 Saxo Classic, placing second in Get Wevelgem, and a week after winning Flanders for a record equaling third time. Philipsen adds even more punch to Team Alpesen de Kunic. The Belgian Milano San Remo winner set out of the Tour Flanders to be ready for Paris Roubaix. Last year, in the sprint behind for second place, he won to stand there on the podium next to his teammate Vanderpool. Who are the riders that could come close to toppling Vanderpool in Paris Roubaix? As I see it, there are two Mads Pedersen, Lidl Trek, and Matteo Jorgensen, the American from Visma Lisa Bike. Many of us are still scratching our heads about Pedersen's attack in Flanders, but let's face it, the Get Wevelgem winner. And Lidl Trek is a cobble classic force, even without Jasper Stoyven and Alex Kirsch, both sidelined with injuries due to the Dwarves crash. Matteo Jorgensen and his Visma Lisa bike team lit up Flanders and tried to put Matthew Vanderpool on the back foot. Jorgensen was the only one who could follow the world champ with this attack on the Kopenberg. But later, after all the fireworks, his legs decided the July 4th celebrations were over and packed up the grill and folding chairs. After the Van Art sunset and the Flanders misfire, I think Visma will retool their classics machinery for Roubaix. Even if Flanders suits Jorgensen better, expect something special from our Idaho friend in Roubaix. Who else? Well, Bahrain Victorious has Mate Mohoric, Jonathan Milan in Lidl Trek. Suda Quickstep is still hoping for Classics Redemption, and they're doing so in Paris Roubaix with Tim Mirlier, who just won Skill de Prix. King Kung, Stefan Kung of Groupama FDJ, the entire Team Emirates, UAE Team Emirates squad, but most notably Nils Pollitt, who finished third in Flanders. Besides Jorgensen, us US fans should keep an eye out on Riley Sheehan of Team Israel Premier Tech. The writer from Colorado keeps impressing in race after race, 
recently closing Flanders, his debut in the monument with 13th place. After rain in recent days, no rain is forecasted for northern France Sunday. The cobbles, unlike in 2021 when Sony Cabrelli won, will be mostly dry, at most damp from the recent days of rain. Temperatures should be around 14 degrees Celsius or 57 degrees Fahrenheit Sunday morning in Copiana and forecast of 17 degrees Celsius or 63 degrees Fahrenheit in the afternoon in Roubaix with clouds covering the skies above the cobbled sectors and the velodrome finish. The wind, predicted at around 27 kilometers an hour or 17 miles an hour, should be coming from the southwest and make for a fast edition. Perry Bay kicks off this Saturday with the fourth edition of the women's race. Canadian Allison Jackson will be back to defend her title. The day after, the 121st edition for the men starts at 11.10 a.m. local or 5.10 a.m. on the East Coast. Flow bikes will have wall-to-wall -wall coverage live and on demand for our viewers in Canada. For everyone else in the world, we'll have highlights interviews, and on-the-ground reports. I'll be there in Roubaix. If you like this Pair Roubaix content and want to make sure you don't miss out on any of the upcoming highlights and coverage for the Ardennes Classics and the Giro d'Italia, make sure you're subscribed. Just click that button right down below. Is there any stopping the Matthew Vanderpool Express train to classic superstardom? And will the unpredictable cobbles throw us some curveballs? To find out, you got to tune in for the 2024 Paris-Roubaix.